Hi, I'm Anna Radford. I'm a long-standing Mount Talbot resident, and this is my personal submission. My family and I have lived on Awairaka slopes for more than two decades, and we've got really deep personal connections here, including both of my children's whenua, or placentas, being buried under trees on this property, including one underneath this beautiful plum tree here. Over the years, we've spent countless hours on Ōwairaka Moanga, enjoying its beautiful natural environment. What I say here in this submission is specific to Ōwairaka, but also very relevant to the other Moanga too. Firstly, I note that the Appendix 5 details the tree felling plans for Ōwairaka, Otahahu Mount Richmond, Pukitapapa Mount Roskill, and Pukiwiwi Big King. And I question what purpose these appendicized items serve in the Integrated Management Plan amendments. These additions are really sketchy and only focus on those four maunga's vegetation. They appear not to be individual maunga plans as such, and certainly not when viewed in the context of individual maunga plans that have been prepared for Maungarei Mount Wellington, Ahuirangi Pigeon Mountain, and Matakuru Ruru Wiri, as per Te Punamanga Agenda's Hui, um, sorry, Te Punamanga Authority's Hui Agenda 79. I understand those particular plans will go out for consultation next year, even though some aspects of that consultation will, will be moot because hundreds of trees have already been felled on those maunga. The proposed Integrated Management Plan Amendment wording provides very little detail about the TMA's plans for Ōwairaka and the other three maunga other than relating to tree felling. It's a curious anomaly, and the only reason I can think it's been done this way is that non-notified resource consents are live for those maunga. And apart from Ōwairākas, which I understand was set aside following the judicial decision, but it could well be reinstated once this public consultation box is ticked. It lends weight to my strong suspicion that there's a foregone conclusion to this consultation, but I really hope I'm wrong in that. Generally speaking, I have some concerns about most of the proposed Integrated Management Plan amendments. However, I do support succession to fully native vegetation, but not in the way it's proposed here. Appendix 5 in your document talks about healing the Tapuna Moanga and facilitating the restoration of their natural, spiritual and indigenous landscapes. Considering what is healing about such deeply unpopular, divisive and environmentally harmful destruction gives rise to the question, are the maunga there to serve us or should we be there to serve them? Let's apply that question to Ōwairaka for example. That maunga was born 120,000 years ago. If Rangatoto is anything to go by, then after only a few hundred years, it would have grown a decent tree canopy and would be supporting many types of birds and wildlife. The ensuing 119,000 years would have seen the moanga cloaked with an increasingly lush natural landscape until encountering humans 800 or so years ago. They modified it a lot and denuded it of its protective cover. Things got even worse 150 or so years ago when a new wave of humans added insult to injury by quarrying it up until the mid-20th century. The semantics of who has done what over the years and why they did it are human constructs because any form of modification wasn't what the maunga intended for itself. Or Wairaka's flourishing nahiri, including its understory of self-seeded native tree species, suggests the moanga doesn't want to be bald. I've spent a lot of time on the moanga and studied her native and non-native flora and fauna closely, as well as the moanga itself. It's clear that the moanga is largely agnostic and uses the non-native species to support the native biodiversity and vice versa. And that's just what's going on above the ground. Ripping out the half of Ōwairaka's mature trees even more on moanga such as Otahahu Mount Richmond, will also significantly impact what is happening within the soil, not to mention making the moanga more susceptible to erosion and runoff. As the name would suggest, the natural world just wants to be natural. It's impossible to reconstruct what nature created and humans destroyed. 
but that's not to say something different but still natural can't be done. But taking a destructive approach is not the way to do it. For all the environmental reasons that have been well traversed in my various submissions and communications on the Maunga tree issue over the years. The Maunga itself, the birds such as Tui and Kareru can teach us all, for they don't treat nature as a native equals good, non-native equals bad binary. They take the best from both worlds, as do we humans, as, e as evidenced by what we eat what we wear, how we get around, and even the musical instruments we play. Rather than taking away all of the exotic and some native trees, I support adding on to what nature is already nurturing and gently lend a helping hand by infill planting indigenous species. I saw such an approach on in play when I visited Motuahi Island recently and was shown the native restoration program there. I noticed many large non-native trees on the island. They were doing no harm and provided a welcome shade for people and food and shelter for the birds and so on. It's been a good 20 years since this restoration began and the nursery cover is only now at a point where they could consider planting larger tree species. It'll be decades before they establish themselves and grow to maturity. And that's in a lower-lying, non-volcanic environment. Things are much harsher on the Moanga, and it's going to take even longer to get close to replacing the trees you intend to fill. That is, if you actually intend to replace them at all. This past three years have represented some fraught times in Awaraka's long life, at least from a human perspective. And now we all find ourselves at a juncture. I don't believe this situation has served any of us well, emotionally or spiritually. And doing more of the same, as proposed in the Integrated Management Plan, isn't going to be healing in any sense of the word. Not for the moanga, not for the environment, and not spiritually or socially for anyone in the long term. Myself and others have been fighting to save the moanga trees and the life forms they support, because we love the moanga and genuinely care about them as do thousands of others. You have choices before you and I hope you exercise them in a constructive manner that respects the positive and constructive sentiment that originally underpin, underpinned the Tapuna Maunga Authority, but importantly also respects the natural environments of Owaraka and other Maunga. I get that you want to attack colonisation but I can't reconcile how attacking Papa Tuanuku and her children can ever be the answer. I hope there will be a fresh start with the proposed integrated management plan amendments where there's a collaborative and respectful coming together from the standpoint of how can we all serve the Moanga's natural landscapes and what can we all learn from nature's slow and gentle way of transitioning the vegetation so that the birds, beasts, people and the planet all benefit during this time. What is to be lost by working together to revere, protect, serve and learn from the Moanga's ancient spiritual landscapes, given that they transcend all of us and given that we are all born of this earth and will in time return to it? It's not just the Moanga that needs healing, however. It's also Tapuna Moanga Authority's broken relationships with local communities. Right now represents an opportunity to make a positive start by setting aside the proposed integrated management plan amendments in favour of a, a fresh and constructive way forward. One way is to take the following steps, both of which are directly inspired by your own integrated management plan. And I quote, Enable regular opportunities to bring mana whenua and other communities together on the Tapuna Moanga. And also, and I quote here as well, community collaboration towards collective stewardship, the importance of the Tapuna Moanga and sense of identity that all peoples derive, and the well-being of the Tapuna Moanga. Taking this approach will help give life to the integrated management plan and the original intention behind it, rather than them simply being hollow words on paper. Thank you.